Buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, this morning we're going to listen to a little bit of this gentleman here, Jeff Christensen. And he's from the Biblical Counseling Academy. That's fancy, huh? You would think somebody that has this sort of a title or you know as a, a spokesman for this sort of uh, entity organization ought to have some understanding of the Bible and I'm gonna show you that he has no understanding whatsoever and I can only assume that it's because he doesn't believe what he reads and it's amazing that he'll read something that's not even there listen to this and years were finished this is the first resurrection blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection over such the second death has no power but they shall be priests to god and of christ and shall reign with him a thousand So this is 1,000 years, uh, the reign of Christ. All right, so right there. What, what in the world is he talking about? What in the world? He just read it. He's still looking at it. He was looking at it when he read it, and he, now he's still looking at it. And he says, he says what? So this is 1,000 years, uh, the reign of Christ. 1,000 years, the reign of Christ. It never says 1,000 years, reign of Christ. We're looking right at it. It's on the screen. He read it. He's looking at it. When he read it, he was looking at it. It never said it then when he was looking at it, and it still doesn't say it now. It never says Jesus reigns 1,000 years years it doesn't say 1000 year reign of Christ it doesn't say any of that it's incredible and if it did then the whole Bible would be a bad book it would be a bad book because we'd have a contradiction with Luke chapter 1 verse 33 as one example this ought to be enough and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, not a thousand years, but forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Knowing this, why would you then turn around and say, one thousand year reign of Christ? Why would you say that? So, this is 1,000 years, uh, the reign of Christ. The reign of Christ. Why would you say that? Well, uh, you know, as I stated previously, over and over again, it's because these guys are preaching a bonus 1,000 years in which they will be able to have all the sex that they could ever dream of. That's why. That's exactly why. There is no other reason why. And they're fantasizing about this 1,000 year period. It's not supported by the Bible at all. So they're imagining it all. Why? Because they are driven by their own inner lust. Listen to this man who has not fulfilled his days for the child um, you know they're if it's a hundred years old you're young so you won't die even if it's a hundred years old you're young what's that mean at a hundred years old those who return to earth from heaven with Christ, which is us, will live. Wow, look at this. I mean, 
He's reading the whole entire sermon. He doesn't understand any of it. And that's amazing to me. You're a preacher preaching the Holy Spirit and the Word of God in... There you are reading from a script. Check that out. He's reading from a script. You know, they're... If it's 100 years old, you're young. Huh? So you won't die even what? at 100 years old. Those who return... <laughs> you won't die at 100 years old. Where are you getting at? It? So you're saying that the Bible is lying because sinners will not inherit the kingdom of God. Oh, do I have to prove it to you? Let's see. Um... Oh, my goodness. Oh, no. i I, I got to think now. Where's this at? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I can't remember. I can't remember. Let's see. Let's see if I can get close here. Oh, can't find it. Can't find it. Maybe he's right. Maybe sinners do inherit. Maybe I got to do it this way. Hold on a second. What? Alright, so let's try it this way. Oh, no, you not. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Well, according to Jeff Christensen, yeah, sinners. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetousness, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. And know ye not? Oh, you didn't know that? But yet here we got Jeff Christensen standing in front of God and everybody. Saying that sinners will inherit eternal life. Is that not what he's saying? Maybe I'm wrong. You tell me. To earth from heaven with Christ, which is us, will live forever. Those Maybe I need to go back. Another, Hold on. No, let's... With a child. Um, um, you know, they're... You know. If it's 100 years old, you're young. What? So you won't die even at 100 years old. Those who return to earth from heaven with Christ, which is us, will live forever. But men and women and their descendants who survive the tribulation will have extended human life. A bonus 1,000 years of guilt-free sex. Peace on earth. Yabba-dabba-doo. And what, you're going to be the one that's in your glorified body, aren't you, Jeff? You're going to be in your glorified body. Meanwhile, you're going to have dominion over the unsaved women, aren't you? And you know what that means. It means yibby dibby do, skippy whippy. Because life will flourish on the planet Earth. Uh, health and healing and uh, even even the environment of the earth will be righteous. There's not going to be war and murder and crime and hate and harm. It's just going to be amazing. I look for in the sex. It's going to be sex. You're leaving that out. Why? Why, Jeff? Because that's the whole reason you're preaching this. Or to this thousand years. Oh yeah. Uh, even though. We will have something even better after that thousand years of new heaven. Oh, so there's, it's going to be better in this thousand years because you're going to be able to have sex with unsaved children. 
But then after the thousand years, it's going to be even better than that. that. Is that what you're saying? I don't understand this. It's odd. It's weird. I don't understand. How in the world do you have unsaved people living after the return of Jesus? Well, let's take a look. Uh, what I, it's, it's odd to me. What, what are you putting your hope into, Jeff? The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Wait a second. The heavens will pass away. The elements shall melt with fervent heat and the earth also so the earth is going to melt and the excuse me the works that are therein the works that are therein shall be burned up how in the world do you have unsaved people living after this knowing all this is coming to an end that's weird, isn't it? I don't understand that. Let's see. When we are changed, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, we will be raised incorruptible. Alright, and then earth elements and the works shall all be burned up and we shall be changed and when this happens then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory so how do you have death afterwards during this thousand years of peace how can you call it peace when there are people dying. Alright, so let's say that there are sinners. That they, they don't die, but they're sinners living during this thousand years. And by the way, Isaiah 65 makes no mention of the idea of a thousand year period at all. And I'll walk you through it here in a second. But how is it that you have unsaved people living after the return of Jesus? Now, here it is. So, when you go to Revelation 20... You can, you can corner these people and easily disprove them if you can get them to talk and admit to what they preach is foolishness, okay? So, what they preach is that, yes, the first resurrection happens when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, even though, well, that's what they preach. Okay. This, and this is the saved people. Then a thousand years happens, and then there's another resurrection of the unsaved people. All right. Now th think about this. Just if you have to, take a deep breath. Just slow down. Relax. And think. What you're saying is that for a thousand years there are unsaved people living with absolutely no chance to get saved. Because the resurrection has passed already. They missed it. And so now they have to live for a thousand years while being unsaved and never dying and 
they're not going to sin. It's amazing. You're really not going to, you're not going to know, are you, that they're not saved? What are they here for? Why are they here for a thousand years? And the resurrection is past already. The first resurrection, you say, is when Jesus comes, that's when the saved get resurrected. The second resurrection that happens a thousand years later, you say, is the unsaved. Therefore, the thousand year period, the unsaved have no opportunity, no chance, no ability to get saved and be resurrected into eternal life. Because it's already passed them. It's already passed them. I, I don't think these people are putting any thought into the logic of what they preach. I, I don't. I honestly, I don't. I think they're thinking about one thing. That's what I think that is on their mind. And they don't care about logic, reasoning, putting thought, pondering, wondering, any of that. Considering, they're not doing any of it. They're just following their own lust. That's what I think, honestly. Now, why, why else would this be here? Why else would it say in Second Peter chapter three? Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust. Why would it say that? It's not there in vain, I can assure you. It is not there in vain. I won't accept the idea that it's, it's there for no reason. Don't accept that at all. Jude 18, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. These be they who separate themselves sensual, having not the spirit. Right. And, of course, this is really in regards to false teachers all right and Judas all right now this gentleman is pointing to Isaiah 65 and claiming that sinners will live a thousand years in peace and I can only imagine he believes that for his own sexual pleasure. Why else would you teach that? I contend there is no other reason for teaching that. Let's take a look at Isaiah 65. Alright. Um, where do I want to start? Do I want to start anywhere? Or just get right to it? Um, yeah, I guess we'll start right here. Hey, right, let's go right here, because I like this one, huh? And ye shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen, for the Lord God shall slay thee, and call his servants by another name, that he who blesses himself in the earth shall bless himself in the God of truth. And he that swears in the earth shall swear by the God of truth, because the former troubles are forgotten, and because they are hid from mine eyes. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered, nor come into mind. But be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. Behold, 
I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people. And the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. There shall be no more thence an infinite days, nor an old man that has not filled his days. For the child shall die an hundred years old, but the sinner, being an hundred years old, shall be accursed. And they shall build houses and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build and another inhabit, they shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble. For they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord, and their offspring with them. And it shall come to pass, that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock. And dust shall be the serpent's meat. They shall not hurt nor destroy. And all my holy mountain, saith the Lord. All right, okay. This is very, 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 very simple. Once the New Testament is revealed. All right. Once you understand the New Testament, this becomes easy to understand. And it's amazing, it's amazing how many people don't understand it. They don't understand the Old Testament because they don't understand the New Testament. And the reason is simple for that, and that is they do not believe because they don't believe their eyes are closed. Because they don't believe there's a veil upon their heart. It's quite simple. Now, if you would have believed the New Testament, you would know that those of us that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ have eternal life. We are born of the Spirit of God. Right, so God dwells in us and we in God. All right, you should know that. And we put our hope into the life to come hereafter. Eternal life where there's a new heavens and a new earth. Just like what we read in in uh, I, in uh, Revelation 21, right? A new heavens and a new earth, right? It's a new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. So that's what we're putting our hope into where there's no more pain, no more sorrow, no more suffering, no more crying, no more death, no more sin. And this is a prophecy that goes back to Genesis 3 verse 15 when the Lord said to the serpent I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel God is going to stomp his foot on the head of the serpent destroying evil forever this is prophesied from Genesis to Revelation all throughout the Bible over and 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 over so, knowing that, if you understand that, then this ought to be real simple. In the life to come, hereafter, okay, there will be no more an infant of days, nor an old man that has not filled his days. Notice here, you gotta separate these two. Alright, you gotta separate these two. Alright. 
notice here you already know you should already know that when we are in the new heavens and the new earth that you have everlasting life in your glorified body in your immortal incorruptible body in your in the new body that Jesus has rebuilt for us right and a body that will never die therefore there is no more an infant of days where we're growing up where we're you know learning how to poop and pee and all that sort of stuff right <laughs> I mean probably a better way to describe that but I mean pretty simple nor an old man that has not filled his days so uh, how, how would you say how would you compare that to what we're going you know old man right now um, there won't be an old man that has not filled his days so there will be old men that have filled their days well yeah sort of I guess I mean it's not wrong right the only thing is that we will never die right so there's not in essence uh, more work to do we got more stuff to do we got to get this done we got to you know we got to get that contract signed we got to get that we got to make that sale I don't know those are probably bad examples but the bottom line is that we have eternal life so there is no more uh, of you know the things that we experience in this world it's pretty simple really I mean it's um, it's hard to imagine because we're not there I guess right that's fair but it's gonna be much better than the world that we're in now for sure without question now so there's not going to be <clears throat> any more of this, uh, you know, getting old and, you know, saving up for retirement and that sort of stuff. There's not going to be any more childbearing or, you know, uh, having a little baby, you know, feeding baby bottles and poopy diapers and all that sort of stuff. So now here, notice here the, the colon, the semicolon or colon, I don't know what we call that. Notice that the, there's a separation here. That's important. It, it, it is. With that, it doesn't change anything. It doesn't change the Word of God, but it helps for us to understand. It helps for us to communicate and to understand. For the child shall die a hundred years old, but the sinner, being a hundred years old, shall be accursed the child shall die in hundred years old now what did this guy say here I forgot what did this guy say I want to go back and listen to what this guy said those who return to earth from heaven with Christ which is us will live forever but hold on infant from there live but a few days nor an old man who has not fulfilled his days for the child um, you know they're if it's a hundred years old you're young so you won't die even at a hundred years for the child shall die 100 years old. For the child shall die 100 years old. Young. So you won't die even at 100 years old. See, to me this is amazing. It's amazing. It really is because... He just read it, and 
did you notice he left Shao Dai out? It's almost like he's reading all this for the first time. He's reading the Bible verse for the first time, and he's reading the script that he's reading from for the first time. That's what it looks like to me. So you won't die even with a child? Um, it's yeah, not... They, not they, let's give it a little bit of time. ...are born and die young. Not so in the millennial reign. No more shall an infant... From there live but a few days, nor an old man who has not fulfilled his days. A child um, lost confidence. You know, they're if it's a hundred years see old, that? you're you see that? You old, see what I'm no, saying? Infant, the guy's got super not confidence. So in the see, ha ha, not so in the millennial reign. Infant's not gonna die. Gonna live for a thousand years. Gonna be party hardy. Millennial reign. No more shall confidence. an infant See the from confidence. there live but a few days. Yeah. Nor an old man who has not yeah. fulfilled his days. Yeah. For the child. Sm See that little smile? Or an old oh, he likes it. Old man who has not fulfilled his days. Yeah. Yeah, he likes it. Uh oh. Wait a second. For the child. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. There goes his fantasy. What's going on here, man? His world's crumbling down on him. Listen. It's crumbling, crashing down. An old man who has not fulfilled his days. Big smile? For the child? Uh -oh. um, um. You know, they're... You know, uh... If it's a hundred years old, you're young. Oh, uh, what? So you won't die even... What? At he just changed it, didn't he? You see that? No more shall an infant. No more shall an infant from there live but a few days. Nor an old man who has not filled his days. Big smile. For. Uh, um. Uh, uh. Uh. What in the world's going on now? For the child shall die. Well, wait a second. That just destroyed his line of reasoning, his line of thought, his logic. He's utterly confused, doesn't understand. It's unbelievable. Child, um, um, you know, they're big swallow. Big the child, swallow. you see, the big, an old man who has not fulfilled yeah, his days. Yeah, big smile. For the child, oh, um, gulp. You know, they're, if it's a hundred years old. The head shake? The head shake? You see that? The head shake? Uh, um, what's that? Da. Da. You know, they're. Big swallow and the head shake. S H. It. That's what he's thinking. Son of a biscuits. Something's wrong. Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> Man, unbelievable. Of course, these guys, they still get, they'll still get money. People don't care. The hell with the truth. But if you're watching and you just have a question, and it'd be nice to hear somebody say the truth. And once you hear somebody say the truth, maybe that'll help you understand the truth. I don't know. Sometimes I feel that way, sure. But uh, the bottom line is you got to believe the Bible that you hold in your hands. Uh, it's nice to hear the truth. And let me let me let me say the truth all right, so that you can hear it. The child shall die in a hundred years old. Let's talk about right now. Right now. The no more thence and infant of days is in the life to come hereafter. The old man that has not filled his days is in the life to come hereafter. The child shall die in a hundred years old is leading up to eternal life. And the sinner being a hundred shall be accursed 
also is leading up to the end of the world and eternal life in the new heavens and the new earth. This is the leading up. This is the current world that we're in, in the green. That's the current world that we're in right now. This in the yellow is in the life to come hereafter. All right, so in the context of what we're reading in Isaiah 65, God is saying, I will create a new heavens and a new earth in the future. And that's at the end of the world, the end of this world, right? The former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. All right, and the former is right now. Right, right now, are we um, in this world? We're in the old heaven and the old earth, so to speak. Right, we're in the current heaven and the current earth. Right, and then there's coming a new heavens and a new earth. Right, so there's coming a no more thence of the in, of an infant of days, nor an old man that has not filled his days. That's coming for for right now. For right now, the child shall die at 100 years old. But the sinner being at 100 years old shall be cursed. These two, well, you got two people here, both the same age. They're both 100 years old. One is called a child, and the other is called a cursed, or a sinner. A sinner that's accursed, excuse me. One's a child, one's a sinner. Now, is really not complicated but but I'm just gonna take a I'm gonna take a guess here yeah got lucky okay first John chapter 3 beloved now are we the sons of God so we are the child of God we are are the child of God even though we're, we might be a hundred years old we're still a child of God but the sinner that's also a hundred he's accursed same age he's not a child of God he is cursed now if you would have read uh, the book of Daniel you might have known this Possibly, many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. So the sinner is a curse. They don't have eternal life. right? They don't have eternal life, but the child of God has eternal life, everlasting life. And again, this is clarified and made easier to understand. Oops. In the New Testament, once the I mean the New Testament reveals it all, makes it all very easy to understand. Um, let's uh, wait a second. Wait a second. I'm not sure if this is what I wanted, but uh, suffer the little children to come unto me, forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. And forbid them not for his. Oh, that's okay. That ah, uh, da 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 da. Let's see if I can find. I don't think. I don't think. I gotta think. I can't think. Let me think. <laughs> uh. Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall no wise enter therein. See, that's a good one right there. Think about that one. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. This doesn't mean you have to get saved as a little kid. That doesn't mean that at all. That means in your heart, in your attitude, in your approach, you want to come to God as a little child. Saying, help me, help me. Just like a little child. Depends on 
his mom and his dad. You want to come to God as a little kid and say, help me, even if you're an old man, even if you're 100 years old, and ask God to help you. Because right? you can't do it on your own. It might take you a while. It might take you 100 years to figure that out. But as long as it, as long as you figure that out, that you can't do it on your own, I have confidence that God will save you. Yeah, the very difficult, troubling part is we live in a world where there are very few people saved, and the overwhelming majority of people believe that they are a good person and that they deserve heaven because they have done good stuff right they're now a good person they stop doing bad stuff and so they deserve good heaven they they've done more good than they've done evil well they're in for a shocker let me find this first hold on a second um it's got to be somewhere it's um, it's it's uh, it, it's set a specific way. And there's this: suffer little children, forbid them not to come unto me, for uh, of such is the kingdom of heaven. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. All right. Forbid them not for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Uh oh. No. Oh goodness sakes. Oh. I know it's on the tip of my tongue. It's on the tip of my tongue. It's just a specific way that it is said that's not it I loved that though when I was a child I speak as a child I understood as a child I thought as a child and when I became a man I put away childish things love that one okay so oh goodness sakes oh gosh I have to do it this way it's the only way it's the only way. Give me a second. Just be patient with me because I know. Ooh, I know it's there. I know it's there. I just got to remember exactly the wording. Alright. I just got to remember the wording. I think it's getting closer. I think I'm getting closer. I think I'm getting closer. Alright, I think I'm getting closer. Oh, oh, oh. I think I'm getting closer. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. That's another good uh, example for uh, what we're reading here in Isaiah. The child being 100 years old. Or the child shall die being 100 years old. How can a child be 100 years old? Well, the only way is for you to be a child of the kingdom. Get it? See, it's all so, made so easy to understand in the New Testament. The only requirement is that you believe the Word of God. You believe the Bible that you hold in your hands. If you don't believe the Bible you hold in your hands, how can you expect to understand anything? Really. Honestly. But that we live in a world where most, hardly anybody at all, it seems, believes the Bible that they hold in their hands. It's incredible. Anybody that goes, um, references the Greek and the Hebrew, that's a red flag right there. It's an indication that they do not believe the Bible that they hold in their hands. If they believed it, why would they go to the Greek and the Hebrew? Huh? They wouldn't. If you believe 
the Bible that you hold in your hand comes directly from God, from God, there's no reason at all to point to a dead language, a foreign language, another language, another book that doesn't exist, an imaginary Bible that does not exist. No reason to. When you've got the authority right in your hand, why would you point backwards? Huh? Remember what uh, God said uh, Lot and his wife, don't look back. Don't look back. Don't look back. And then, so why are you looking back? <laughs> yeah, it's amazing to me. Oh, well, you can't trust the... Uh, the old English of the 1611, you've got to go back thousands of years before that. The, the 1611's outdated. So you got to go back even further. Uh, these guys don't, they don't put any thought into what they say. You got to, and we got to be diligent, man. We got to be ready. All right, right there, convert, accept, no, is that it? Yes, that's it, that's what, I, there we go. Oh, finally, let me think about this one. Matthew 18, and said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted, and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Unless you become as little children, he's not talking to little babies, and he's not saying little baby, unless you turn into a little child, you won't enter the kingdom of heaven. He's talking to everybody. <laughs> he's, not, he's not talking to infants. He's talking to everybody. Unless you become as a little child, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now, in the Old Testament, it says, For the child shall die in a hundred years old. Well, how can the child not be a hundred years Blah, 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 blah. Well, if you understood Matthew 18 and what this means to become as little children, that you are a child of God, Right? If you don't understand that, then don't you don't ex don't expect to understand anything at all. And there might be a reason why you don't understand it, and that's because you don't believe. I mean, that's the only thing I can think of. There's no excuse. You got no excuse. No excuse at all. And then, of course, the sinner, being a hundred years old, the same same age, the same age being a hundred years old shall be accursed let's see uh, is there something I can point to uh, yeah right there All right, look, right there that's another one right there there's a good one all three of these are good John chapter 7, verse 49. But this people who knows not the law are cursed. Now compare that with what we read in Isaiah 65. The sinner, being a hundred years old, shall be accursed. You see it? You get the connection there? Right? This people who know not the law are cursed. Right? The sinner, being a hundred years old, is shall be accursed. Pretty simple, isn't it? It's not complicated. Well, you said, well, well, for a thousand years, they're not going to sin, but they're going to be uh, sinners. And we're just going to ignore logic and common sense. I'm just, for a thousand years, I'm going to be running this place, and I'm going to be, I have 500 wives. It's going to go back to what was, the way it was. That's what they say. That's what they say. He didn't know that. They say they're going to go back to how it was in the days of Noah when men were living 900 years old. Right? Oh, what a glorious time that was. Right? 
living to be 930 years old and so on and so forth. And woo we were going back to that deck back when the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose you know what that means right that means they had multiple wives of many wives as they wanted of all which they chose and so he thinks well we're going back to that glory to God I can't wait for that well glory to God he's in for a big shock big 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 shock Galatians 3 verse 10 for as many as are of the works of the law are under the cursed for it is written cursed is everyone that continues not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them compare that with Isaiah 65 verse 20 the sinner being a hundred years old shall be accursed you see it you make the connection there you get it Galatians 3 verse um, 13 Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us for it is written cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree see Christ has redeemed us from the curse the child has been redeemed from the curse the sinner has not been redeemed from the curse because the sinner has not believed in the Lord Jesus Christ it's pretty simple man it's all revealed right there in the New Testament. Right? Pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. Pretty amazing how these guys stumble. It's amazing. Days, nor an old man who has not fulfilled his days. Big smile. With a child. Uh oh. Um, Gulp. Shake your head. You know, they're. Uh, if it's 100 years old, you're young. Ignore. So, so we're going to ignore. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. These guys are phony. They're all phony.